will line up. Thank you very much, Michael. I'll start with the All-Ireland Champions, Kilkenny. There are three late dramatic changes. Between the posts once again will be this man, Glenmore's Moore's own Murphy. Three games played in the championship and no goal yet conceded. Paul Murphy is quite simply a brilliant defender and his presence alone on that inside line must give Joey Holden and team captain Shane Prendergast huge confidence. Farig Walsh and Killian Buckley are on the wings, but Liam Blanchfield comes in to the team. He may or may not play at centre-back. Castle Comer's Connor Fogarty was the hero for Kilkenny six days ago, as it was his point that levelled the match for the ninth and final time. His midfield partner is the legendary Michael Fennelly. Walter Walsh's goal last Sunday in Croke Park saved the Cats' lives for definite, while TJ Reid beside him scored 11 frees. Mark Bergen from O'Loughlin Gales starts at left forward. He's the second change. Owen Larkin did enough six days ago to start this evening and joins Colin Finley in the inside line. Richie Hogan was on fire in the first half and the Deche must this evening have a plan to stop him scoring points as he did last Sunday. Stephen O'Keefe from Ballygunner is a fine goalkeeper with his ball handling and delivery of short or long puckouts a crucial ingredient in this Waterford team. Turin Shane Five has emerged as a top-class defender, but Barry Cochran has been rock-solid at full-back. And left cornerback is the man from Passage All-Star 2015, Noel Connors. Young Hurler of the Year 2015 tied to Burkas at number five, while at six it's the outstanding Austin Gleeson from Mount Sign. Completing the half-back line is Philip Mahoney, whose work rate is quite phenomenal. It's the four-mile water double act in the middle of the field. 22-year-old Jamie Barron will once again be joined by his neighbour and clubmate Conor Gleeson, who won a Munster Under-21 Championship medal a few weeks ago. Kevin Moran is an inspirational captain at number 10, with the youngest of the team, 19-year-old Shane Bennett, at centre forward. Completing the half-forward line is a great warrior and wonderful hurler, Michael Brickwalsh. The Dacia full forward line looks a little different this evening with man of the match Porig Mahoney in the corner. De La Salle's Jake Dillon at full forward with the only change on the team at top of the left. Stephen Bennett, older brother Shane, will start this replay, which will start in about four minutes' time. It will indeed, and here to give us their views in the meantime, it is hello again to Gerlach Nan, Ken McGrath, and to Eddie Brennan. First question to Eddie. We've seen the changes. Marty has outlined them there for us. Uh, Brian Cody, it looks like, has shuffled the deck. Eddie, what do you think of it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a couple of big calls. Um, and I think the, the shuffling will be complete when the teams line out because yes. I think there's a lot of positional changes. Of course. Uh, Liam Blanchfield is not going to start at centre-back. But look, uh, Brian has probably obviously seen something. I think it's a huge call, <coughs> Mark Bergen and, and Liam Blanchfield, two inexperienced corner mm. forwards. But... He has done this in the past. 2004, he threw in a certain Chaff Fitzpatrick here in the replay against Clare the same day. And, you know, Cha had a super career for Kilkenny. So, look, um, he had to probably make a few changes. I think what you're going to see tonight is uh, maybe Conor Fogarty is going to sit back into centre-back where he plays with his club. Very solid, no yeah, problem yeah. for him. And I just don't see Conor drifting up the field like Kieran Joyce did the last day on Austin Gleeson. He's somebody else's problem to look after sure. there. But I think uh, midfield is going to be interesting. Talks are Richie Hogan and TJ Reid are going to start there. That, to me, is an indication that Kilkenny are going to look at getting on the front foot and keeping things quite tight. I think they can't afford <coughs> to be chasing Waterford again. So they will try to get their noses in front and push on from there. Ken, most neutrals don't expect Kilkenny to be chasing Waterford because the, the view has been that Waterford lost their chance last week. What's the view in Waterford? Yeah, look, I suppose it's, it's how the team is going to deal with the extra expectations this week. I suppose uh, a lot of people were surprised maybe with the performance last Sunday, but hurling people in the county were from, we, we knew what, what was capable, of the, what was in the team. Uh, produced 60, 67 minutes of top-class hurling. Sure. Got caught at the end a bit. Uh, no better team to catch it in Kilkenny. But it's up to how the lads uh, prepared. I know that they prepared uh, perfectly all week. It's how really psychologically they, they dealt yes, with it. Yeah. And that's the most important thing for, for tonight. Uh, that's like a home pitch for Warford, in all fairness. We have a great record the last 10, 12 years up in Yeah, Tordis. of course. Yeah. I, I, can, I, I expect a bit of an onslaught in the first few minutes with Kilkenny. I'd say a few Kilkenny players were burnt after last Sunday. Uh, no better team to give it to you back than Kilkenny. Uh, numbers won't matter uh, in, in this. I think we saw the teams being, being named there. Players are alive to play any positions, I think, and we know in the next five, five, six minutes. Well, I suppose the two lads obviously <laughs> have vested interest in this thing for the rest of us. <clears throat> We're just hoping that we get a game something like we had last summer. Well, anything near the quality of last Sunday would do us fine, Michael, but to me, the changes make perfect sense because Kilkenny were out muscled and outfielded in that crucial middle third last Sunday. Now, that half hour line today is going to be Owen Larkin, Mick Finnelly, and Walter Welch. Three massive men, great hurlers, 
desperate battlers. The two best hurlers in the country, maybe, will be midfield. Sure. TJ and, and, and Richie Hogan. Connor Fogarty did a good job on Gleason when he went back the last day, centre back. And the, you know, that, those eight there, Cody's dependent on those eight to control the, go the ball, uh, uh, control the game. And then Colin Finlay, full forward. He will move away from Barry Coughlin and open it up. Now, last Sunday, Waterford showed they have everything, all the qualities needed to make a great team. Tonight is the test of character. Will they stand up and do the same thing again? That's the big question tonight. And in a word, Ger, <coughs> answer the question. No, I, 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 I fancy Kilke As After those changes, uh, the changes I've seen, even though there might be a few weaknesses there, you'd, I'd have to fancy Kilkenny. It'll be a massive achievement for Waterford if they can turn over this Kilkenny team. It will indeed. Let's see what happens. Yeah, look, the Kilkenny and Brian Cody were bound to do it, Marty, but I expect some hell and thunder here for the first five minutes of this half. The All-Ireland Hurling Semi-Final 2016 replay is underway in Thurless. The lights are on, and away we go. James McGrath from County Westmead is the match official, as Kilkenny play from left to right as we look at it. Interesting switches already, and Richie Hogan stepping away from the challenge rather easily. Laying it off as Walter Walsh. Looks like Richie's playing in midfield with TJ Reid. TJ Reid has gone forward. Walter Walsh gives it outside. Already the pace has started dramatically. Going forward, and once again, it's Mark Bergen, but Waterford regained the possession. Ball given away. Comes far as Killian Buckley in a little bit of space, dropping it in. Up goes Michael Fenley, who's gone into an attacking role. Gone down as Noel Connors. But it's Kilkenny to have the opportunity to open the account, and that's over the bar. A dramatic, enthusiastic, passionate start to this All-Ireland hurling semi-final replay. Yeah, it's exactly the start that young Blanchard would have wanted, you know, coming onto a ball, but Brian Cody has set up his team, this time wanting to win the middle third. TJ Reid, Richie Hogan, out around the middle, experienced players there. He'd have identified that the last day has been the, the point, I suppose, that Watford launched their attacks from. McFenley now was given Ty De Burke a problem because he's going to stand 60 yards in the water for goal. Will Ty De Burke sit back or not? With a Kilkenny player down injured there at the moment, Walter Walsh. But it's certainly at the, the fiery start Kilkenny would have wanted, Marty. Walter Walsh was the uh, goal-scoring hero six days ago. Seemed to pick up a knock there, but uh, he's a great warrior. And it looks like uh, he's going to take his place. Dan Shanahan is the 16 man up and down the sideline and sometimes encroaching onto the pitch. Now that the dust has settled in the early minute and a half, it's the puck out from Stephen O'Keefe. Drop it. Beautifully caught us. What that man again, Austin Gleason, steps away from the challenge. This is just gone to the left and wide. Yeah, it's amazing what um, six days will do. They were going over the bar the last day, but again, Austin Gleason, you can see him in the air. He's coming from behind the Kilkenny defenders like the last day. If you play Kilkenny guys in the front on the puck out, they can break it away. But when you come from behind, they don't know that you're coming. Great catch from Austin. Knocked down, Horik Mahoney. Such an influential figure last week. Kilkenny chasing pressure has crossed the, the line. It's an infringement. And it's a free for Waterford. Again, the physicality of the game. TJ Reid tried to stand Podrick Mahoney up. Look, I suppose this early in the game, it was, uh, it was a soft enough one in a lot of ways. TJ had tried to do everything right. He hadn't moved his arms around him, but an early chance now. Stephen O'Keefe coming up to hit this one. Stephen O'Keefe coming outside his own 45-metre line, dropping this in around the house. Ball bobbling all over the place, but it's Kilkenny to come away with it. And the captain, Shane Prendergast from Clara, carried a little bit too much pace. Richie is indicating, use the hand pass, Shane. And on that occasion, it just carried a little bit too much pace. Sideline ball for Waterford, just inside the Kilkenny half of the field. Derek McGrath in his third year in charge. Can he come up with something to beat Kilkenny, the All-Ireland champions? Brian Cody in his 18th year in charge. First championship was 1999. Undoubtedly, the greatest manager Hurling has ever seen. The cut in is quite a good one because it uh, finds Philip Mahoney. Philip Mahoney goes to hit this slither. It's dropping in. Old Murphy calls for it. I could hear the, the call up here in the commentary position, laying it off quickly as uh, could Kenny go for distance. Two against two here. The breaking ball. Left by Noel Connors, but in fact gathered by Noel Connors. Used the hand pass first time to Borka. Chasing after him is all Larkin and the Kilkenny Cats chasing everything, not allowing Waterford to do, go any further than their own uh, 
45 metre line. It comes towards Corey Manning. Manning goes for distance. Chasing after this is Shane Bennett. Gone back together with his Kilkenny captain, Shane Prendergast. 30 years of age since June. Gives it out just a little bit. Getting to skidding off the surface was Killian Buckley. In comes Michael Brickwatch. Hand passing it into the middle. It's Austin Gleason. Gets by the first chance. He shoots. He scores a goal. Brilliant Waterbird. Brilliant Austin Gleason. Four minutes, 31 seconds. Take it out. Well, they said one, but couldn't score goals, Marty, but that man, Austin Gleeson, great ball in from Brick Welch, but this time he's going to take on the full back line, and what an unbelievable finish, low past the goalkeeper, they're very, very hard to stop for Owen Murphy, right beside his ankles, a great finish. It was such an acute angle, you didn't think that he would uh, rattle the net, but there was a rasper. Here comes Kevin Moore, captain of the dish, running on, Michael Brick Walsh, lovely little pick-up. The pace is exactly what we saw last Sunday. Six days later, they have recovered. Here comes Jake Diller from the Telesile Club. Same club, a lovely little flick on. He was about to lose it. Brick Walsh is in a good position, decides not to shoot. Lays it back for his Stephen Bennett. Older brother of this man. Comes for his Austin Gleason. It's high, and the white flag is raised. Here we go again, Brendan Cummins. Yeah, Matt, there's no doubt about it. Waterford have hit the ground running there. You'd have been worried in the first minute or two, but now certainly the thunder into the game. It's no coincidence, though, that Brick Welch is involved in everything good that Waterford are doing. He calms down the play and brings others into a great score again from Austin. Puck out from Owen Murphy. Run up for it is tied to Burke. Runs on for his Michael Fennelly. Hovering dangerously. Close to the goals is Mark Bergen, but Waterford relieved the pressure. Attacking it first time is Killian Buckley. What a wonderful half-back this man is. From the Dixborough Club. Looks to see if there's anybody available. Tries to get it into the centre. Good work by Noel Connors. Out for his part, Manny. Called by TJ Reid. Who happens to be his cousin, actually, that I only learned here in Simple Stadium. But there'll be no family battles on today, because, uh, or there will be family battles, because the two cousins have collided. And on this occasion, it looks like it's going to be a free for Waterford and for Philip Mahoney. I think already you could see Mark Hergen, he'll want to get his hand on the ball now. There's a couple of balls gone up on his side there that he hasn't made. Stake Cano, a young man, really starting off in his championship career. He's in the middle of a, a real storm in that Waterford half-back line, so he'll want to get his hand on the ball to settle himself down a bit. But with the way there's a bit of a breeze blowing in towards Austin there now, he may not get the distance on this one. Between the 45 and 65. On his own side of the field. This is dropping in. Three Kilkenny cats. One of them is Richie Hogan. Seemed to be a high challenge by Shane Bennett. Referee said play on. Walter Walsh has recovered from his earlier knock. Hits diagonal ball. Waterford under a little bit of pressure. Runs on for his penalty. Penalty, Colin, about to pull the trigger. Oh, my word. What a goal. Fantastic goal. Take it out twice. Yeah, an unbelievable finish there to be fair from Colin Fenley. You know, you, he's threatening to do this every time he plays, but in fairness to Barry Cockin, he had a little slip as it came in, but watch Colin's eyes pointed towards that left side of Stephen O'Keefe's goal. There was no way that was going to be stopped. An unbelievable finish. Sides level for the first time in Simple Stadium. Colin Fenley, what an amazing strike. It absolutely flew past Stephen O'Keefe. And it just goes to show you, Marty, tonight that both teams have learned from the last day. If they get one-on-one -on -one inside the 25 yards, they're going to try to get goals here. We think that Shane Bennett perhaps got a yellow card. We'll confirm that shortly. Ball bobbling around the place. We've just been confirmed in the fact that Shane Bennett did get a yellow card. Great block down Walter Walsh coming on the rebound, but it's gone out over the sideline. Sideline ball. And there's a bit of shouldering and there's temper sprayed, and it's very unnecessary. But they're all laying down a marker. None of them going to step back from the challenge. A massive prize of playing in Croke Park on the first Sunday in September is at stake. All Ireland champions won't want to let go of the Liam McCarthy. And of course, Waterford won it for the first time since 1959. No, Martin, my only surprise is it's taken eight and a half minutes for that to happen. You know, both sides really know each other. The last day, the last thing Waterford wants to do is take a step back from Kilkenny. So anytime in broken play, Kilkenny wants to be the aggressor. I'm sure Derek McGrath have told his players don't take a step back tonight, and they're certainly not. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe again. Yellow card for Michael Fennelly. 
yellow card as well. We confirm for Shane Bennett. The cut in is from Austin Gleason. Carries a lot of pace. Gathered by Stephen Bennett, almost. Working hard as Shane Prendergast. Comes back outside first, Paul Murphy. Dropping ball. Runs past them all. Tied to Burka. Back there, waiting for the loose ball. Perfectly positioned. Sends it back down again towards Stephen Bennett. Knocked away. Coming in is Jake Dillon, but good defending again by Kilkenny, and in particular by Conor Fogarty, who seems to have taken up the centre half back uh, position. In order for it, putting the ball into the middle of the field. Torrig Mahoney coming up. Richie Hogan just put up the hurl. Beautiful wrist. Takes the shoulder. Moves around like a ballet dancer. Tries to hand pass it back. Under a bit of pressure. Brick Walsh chasing Paul Murphy. Murphy looking around to see who's available. Switches it over first. Killian Buckley. Buckley looks around. Then decides to go for distance. Dropping it in towards Michael Fennelly. Tied to Burke going up with him. Coming through is Walter Walsh. He's about to pull the trigger. Lays it off to Fennelly. Goal number two. Brilliant. Fantastic goal. Colin Fennelly, number two. Yeah, again, that man, Nick Fennelly, was involved in it. He's keeping tight to Burke. Occupied once they got the break here. You can see it coming on. Walter comes off the shoulder. They're always onto the breaking ball. Kilkenny, lovely hand pass to the shooter. And he absolutely took the roof of the net off of the goals. Again, you know, patience, calm, put it in. And Colin, that was an unbelievable finish again, but all set up for a great run and pass from Walter. Two slithers, two strikes, two goals. The name is Colin Finnelly. Ten and a half minutes gone in this first half. There's hardly time to take breath as Kevin Bourne drops it in. Stephen Bennett is in there, so too is Shane Prendergast. The younger brother is arriving, in comes Conor Fogarty. Great block down, Jake Dillon. Conor Fogarty heading towards his own end line. Over first, Shane Prendergast. Chased Harris by both Bennett and indeed Jake Dillon. He gets in his clearance, comes back out first. Brick Walsh gets by Killian Buckley. Again, Brick Walsh will look around to see who's available. 14 points last Sunday. Horik Mahane gets point, ever ahead. It's his first of the day. It is, and again, it's that man, Brick Walsh. How many times over the years have we seen him? That one-handed shovel pass back, and again, Podrick Mann, he's picked up the form. He left in Crow Park, off his back foot over the bar from the sideline. Great score. Owen Murphy going to take the puck out. Dropping down again towards Michael Finley and Ty to Burkett. Burkett comes away with it, scoops it forward. Little flick on. It's spot on by... Corrig Mann, in comes first Corrig Walsh, space inside, but the ball skidded past Richie Hogan, could still come his way, Richie Hogan chasing after it, there he is, looking, turning, sweet ball in, it's dropping a little bit short, should be capably dealt with by Stephen O'Keefe, no short puck out from him, he's going for distance, dropping down, picked up by Corrig Walsh, Tuller Rollman gets, tries to get past the first challenge, Walter Walsh, lovely little pull and turn by Jamie Barron, one man up, the one man up is Stephen Bennett, taking on Paul Murphy, has the, the ability to take him on, he decided to go for a shot and Old Murphy dealt with it capably enough, coming out to gather is Michael Penley, lovely stick work, TJ Reid was coming through on his right shoulder, Reid didn't score a point from play last Sunday and he has now rectified that statistic, first point of the match for the Ballyhill Shamrock star and it's all the way from the middle of the field. Yeah, Marty, the last uh, the last game, he only had five touches of the ball all the way through. Brian Cody then moves into the middle third with himself and Richie Hogan there. Richie was in hard luck. He got into the hole to tie the Burke had left behind, tried to get a score, but again, TJ's getting a bit of influence in the game. 13 minutes played, and in this match so far, we've had three goals and four points, all of them from play. Here's Shane Bennett, another one on the way. Oh, great defending. Now that is class. As much as we... Congratulate the forward stick work. We must also applaud the wonderful defending of Kilkenny. Good work here by Shane Fives. Easily you could hear him calling for it. Out for Farid Manny, just outside his own 65. Manny gives it away. Farris Killian Buckley in, in a little bit of space. Pumps it back. Colin Fennelly. He's sniffing a hat trick here in Simple Stadium. He's already got two. Scoops it up. Turns a little bit. Turns inside. He's getting the better Barry Cochran. Easily dealt with by Stephen O'Keefe, who sends it long. Austin Gleeson wasn't quite expecting it. Comes and he takes it magnificently ahead of Conor Fogarty. Over first Kevin Moore. 
Shane Bennett is inside. Moore being chased by three Kilkenny players. Referee James McGrath has blown his whistle and has given a free in to Waterford. Well, we've only had 14 minutes, but it's breathtaking. Be honest, Marty, I don't know how Austin Gleeson caught that last ball. You can see here, though, Shane Bennett coming through. Difference between him and Walter Walsh. You know, Walter gave the pass early, gave Colin Fenley the opportunity. Shane Bennett carried the ball into traffic. If you do that against this Kilkenny team, he had the opportunity last Sunday as well, Marty. He got closed down and just kicked it across the goal and was cleared. So, you know, you have to learn these lessons. Those opportunities are few and far between. Porig Mahoney going to take it. Derek McGrath. A little bit concerned, I've no doubt, that he's conceded 2-2 in the opening 14 minutes and well aware that Colin Fennelly scored both of them, so that could be an ominous sign. Porig Mahoney, Bally Gunnerman. His radar was working perfectly last Sunday, but the umpire has gone for Hawkeye. It's Hawkeye he's called for, that's the indication. And referee James McGrath is now indicating it, confirming it. So it's Hawkeye in Simple Stadium. We have it in Croke Park. We have it here as well, and uh, the buzz and the talk around, and it gives everybody indeed a chance to talk after the opening 15 minutes. Every single shot is important in a match like this, Brendan. It is, there's no doubt. Now, Kigeni have had a bit of luck on Hawkeye over uh, in the, during the last game there with uh, Kevin Moran's point, but Mahoney, there shouldn't be a need for a Hawkeye from that distance, but here we go with the result on it. Is it a thaw or is it a kneel? Oh. It looks good, just inside the post, it's a thaw. Second point of the match for Porig Mahoney. I have to say, and it's not a gift of hindsight, I thought it was okay from here, but uh, I was surprised by the umpire. Anyway, better to make sure. Puck out from Owen Murphy. Jamie Barron almost got his fingertips to it, gathered by Michael Finley. as a pull, tied to Burke, was falling. Finley didn't connect, Jamie Barron, he's a real ball of energy, steps by his own man as well. Look at that for Stickwell. You don't need evil stick with Jamie Barron around. After the opening 15 minutes. Every single shot is important in a match like this, Brendan. It is, there's no doubt. Now, Kigeni have had a bit of luck on Hawkeye over in the, during the last game there with uh, Kevin Moran's point, but Audrey Mahoney, there shouldn't be a need for a Hawkeye from that distance, but here we go with the result on it. Is it a thaw or is it a kneel? It oh. looks good, just inside the post, it's a thaw. Second point of the match for Porig Mahoney. I have to say, and it's not a gift of hindsight, I thought it was okay from here, but uh, I was surprised by the umpire. Anyway, better to make sure. Puck out from Owen Murphy. Jamie Barron almost got his fingertips to it, gathered by Michael Finley. There's a pull tied to Burke who was falling. Finley didn't connect, Jamie Barron, he's a real ball of energy, steps by his own man as well. Look at that for Stickwell. You don't need evil stick with Jamie Barron around. In comes Jake Dillon, hits the shoulder of TJ Reid, the hand pass is not a good one, and it's gathered once more and cleared on the field on this occasion. Richie Hogan, having received the long ball from Michael Finley, coming through the middle of his own locket, got a taste of the action last Sunday, it's a wall of Deshamed. Kevin Moran is hit fairly and squarely, Larkin is only getting up off his, uh, uh, onto his feet now, the ball is blocked down again, Porig Mahoney, Mahoney tries to get away from uh, number 24, that's Mark Bergen, and the ball is sent down the field, breaking ball, picked up by TJ Reid, Michael Brick Walsh putting the pressure on TJ, TJ Reid giving it back for his Joey Holden, just leaving it behind him momentarily was not a Fogarty. It's that sort of pace. Look at the intensity. Look at the drive. On the ground, we have a bit of ground hurling. Wonderful to watch. As Waterford again flicked the ball over. First Philip Mahoney. Mahoney getting by the first challenge. That's Conor Gleeson. Great block down again. Everything, everything is being chased. You really have to be in the prime of your life for this All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. Lovely turn by Austin Gleeson, but it's over there to nobody. Gathered by TJ Reid. He's inside his own... 45 meter line, he's gonna go for it. He's giving it everything. He fancies his chance of stopping a little bit short. Stephen O'Keefe watched it all the way. Good goalkeeping, giving it out to the far over wing. Good work by Philip Mahoney, trying to get away from Richie Hogan. Into the center, first Jamie Barrett. Looks around to see who's available. Again goes down that channel. Stephen Bennett, gathered here by Shane Bennett, the younger brother. In comes TJ Reid to challenge. Bennett, looking around, under pressure, but composed. As they go forward again, the captain gives the call. Kevin Moore gives it into the middle towards Jake Dillon, trying to turn him. And a good defending on this occasion. 
great defending Kilkenny full marks to Paul Murphy out fires Walter Walsh Walter Walsh dropping it down testing out the Waterford defence good play Kilkenny waiting for it is Richie Hogan dropping this in and again the ball is just gone to the left and wide and Kilkenny really need to use Colin Fennelly a little bit more he's a potential match winner let's go down to the sideline to Donald Grady what's your thoughts what's your view Donald well it's obvious from the beginning Marty that uh, Michael Fennelly playing a centre forward he's dropping back into midfield but at the, the one time that he thinks that the ball is going to come along he backs on top of uh, Ty de Boca and that has worked well for them every time he's focusing on Ty de Boca to stop him being outlet uh, ball for, the, for his midfielders Conor Gleeson didn't have time to look around because in comes Richie Hogan but from the middle of the field is that over the bar? yes it is brilliant play Jamie Barron from Four Mile Water Put stop straight between the posts. It is a fantastic score from Jamie Barron because the breeze has whipped up a bit there as well, you know, and he's into the teeth of it. So a great score. And one I would say that the Watford would have needed to settle him in a little bit again. One point between the teams. TJ Reid going up with Kevin Moran. Kevin Moran scooping it up, getting past Owen Larkin, and away he goes. Captain showing leadership. Three Kilkenny players converge on him, ball is low in for Stephen Bennett, outside him is Jake Taylor, about to pull the trigger wow what a match what a goal, you're seeing it all in Central Stadium Perlis yeah and on a night like tonight when your centre back is running back towards his own goal, didn't have a problem one on one inside, great hand pass at Jake Taylor, what an unbelievable finish the ball was rising, we've seen an exhibition of taking goals Goalies having a hope here once they get through one on one, Marty. Great goal. Four cracking goals that you're unlikely to see anywhere in the championship at any time of the year. Unstoppable. And here come Kilkenny. The effort by Walter Walsh is just outside the post and wide. No need for Hawkeye. Decision made. It is, you know, and there's people talking all the time, Marty, about the sweep for this, the sweep for that. You see there, when you top class forwards, they get you one on one inside. Something is going to happen. Bennett slipped an unbelievable pass, Stephen, in fairness to him, and uh, that finish is just class. Goal scorers, Austin Gleeson, Jake Dillon for Waterford. Goal scorers for Kilkenny, Colin Fennelly. Let's see if the breaking ball is picked up here by Michael Brick Walsh, stepping away from the challenge, being chased, laying it off quickly. As Waterford go in pursuit of more scores, it's way out the field, it's from the 45 metre line, the crowd are responding, this time it's Shane Bennett, sending that straight over the crossbar, and another white flag has been raised. Yeah, Waterford are making their period of dominance count there now again, Bennett has been quite enough to date here, but that was a great score off his left. Puck out from Owen Murphy. Dropping down, tied to Burke and Michael Fennelly, an interesting challenge, Noel Connors has to go back and gather this. Looking around to see, again, who's available, goes out, send it out the wing like any good cornerback, and out over the sideline. Plenty to think about, plenty to talk about, and we've only had 21 minutes and 22 seconds. Let's go down to the sideline uh, and see what uh, Donald O'Grady is thinking of the first 21 minutes. Well, Mark, anything that has, um, you know, just struck me there, Kilkenny have uh, had six puck outs that they've struck right down to the half forward line. They've lost each one of them, and uh, from the second last one there, like, Waterford launched a great counter-attack, and uh, that ended up with Jake Dillon's goal. So I think uh, the same thing happened last week. They lost a lot of the breaking ball. I think uh, it's time for Owen Murphy maybe to change his puck out strategy. Ball comes down into the middle of the half-back line as such, cleared eventually. Total from play, four goals and six points out of four goals and seven it's that sort of match ball breaks Jamie Barron goes together Colin Finley knocks it off his stick Owen Larkin great vision TJ Reid coming through the middle channel and away goes TJ Schlitter to hurl he's confident he's going to score brilliant save by O'Keefe out first time to Burka it was a rasper but Stephen O'Keefe saved it tied to Burka knows that that was a crucial moment but look at the skill look at Derek McGrath it's an emotional roller coaster ride and thanks for the god there's loads plenty in, in terms of time look at this for skill TJ Reid pulled the trigger O'Keefe was straight at him when you look at that angle but the point is he was there he was there and he moved it away out to the side of it you know he didn't just break it down his feet which can always be a trouble with Kilkenny because normally someone following up but you see TJ Reid's influence on the game there he had legs to get away today you know he looked a bit tired and flat the last day but he's on it today 
It's over 10 minutes since Kilkenny scored. Waterford found their rhythm. Oh, fantastic. Unbelievable. Austin Gleeson. The intention was to give it back to him, but that didn't work. Michael Fennelly out around the middle of the field. He started in the half forward line. Ball is sent down low and hard. Down towards uh, Liam Blanchfield. Blanchfield sent.